Now that we've gone through all the determinants of demand, we understand that there are a number of things that influence the quantity of a particular good or service that an individual or a market wants. To recap, we say the things that affect demand are the price of the item, individual's income, the prices of related goods, meaning substitutes or complements, tastes, expectations, and in the case of market demand, number of buyers. Notice also that we could be talking about market demand, with a capital Q here, or individual demand. If we're talking about individual demand, this last factor, number of buyers, becomes irrelevant. Think about what would happen, however, if we tried to graph this function in its entirety. We need a whole bunch of axes, because we would need one axis for each one of these different determinants, which isn't really possible. Two axes, easy. Three axes, possible. Four axes, we need to have a time dimension or something to our graph, and that just gets ugly really, really quickly. So what do we do instead? We say, well, when we plot our demand curve, as we saw earlier, we're just plotting quantity as a function of price by itself. So what we're doing in order to accomplish this is we're holding all of the other determinants of demand constant. Because of the limitations of our two-dimensional graph, it becomes important to distinguish between what happens graphically when we have a change in price and what happens graphically when we have a change in something other than price. You'll notice here that when we have a change in price and nothing else, we're just moving from one point to another point on the same demand curve. You'll notice as we go from P1 to P2, we just get a corresponding change in, qu in quantity from Q1 to Q2. We call this movement along the demand curve a change in quantity demanded. Now let's think instead about what happens when something other than price changes. Say we have a change in income, in tastes, in expectations, etc. In this case, rather than moving from one point to another on the same demand curve, we get a change in the fundamental relationship between price and quantity. This is represented as a shift in the demand curve. And we say that shifts in the demand curve are referred to as a change in demand. So we can have, in this case, an increase in demand, or a shift to the right on the quantity axis, or we can have a decrease in demand, which is a shift to the left on the quantity axis. Notice in this case that even when we hold price constant, when we have an increase in demand, we go from the quantity here to a larger quantity here for every price. And when we have a decrease in demand, again, holding price constant, we get a decrease in quantity at each price. So let's summarize. If we have something other than a change in price, we're either going to see an increase in demand or a decrease in demand. You'll notice here that an increase in demand corresponds to a shift to the right of the demand curve. We could also think of this as for any given quantity demanded, consumers are now willing to pay a higher price for that quantity than they were before. When we have a decrease in demand, we see a shift to the left of the demand curve. Alternatively, we can think about this as for any given quantity of demand, consumers are willing to pay only a lower price than they were before. Even though it's pretty clear here that we can think of the different shifts as either horizontal shifts or vertical shifts, just by convention we tend to think about an increase in demand as a shift to the right and a decrease in demand as a shift to the left. You'll notice that there are a number of different ways that we can get an increase in demand. We get an increase in demand if we have increased income, and we're talking about a normal good. We get an increase in demand if we have decreased income, and we're talking about an inferior good. We get increased income if a price of a substitute increases. We get increased demand if the price of a complement decreases. Or if we have an increased taste for a particular item. Lastly, in the case of market demand, if the number of buyers in our market increases. On the other hand, we get a decrease in demand 
or a shift to the left in our demand curve if we have a decrease in income when we're talking about a normal good, if we have an increase in income when we're talking about an inferior good, if the price of a substitute decreases, if the price of a complement increases, if we have decreased taste for the particular item, or if the number of buyers in our market decreases, we see that the market demand for the item decreases. It's super important to be able to list off the determinants of demand and understand how each one of them affects the different shifts in the demand curve. Because we're going to come back and say, well, when we talk about economic equilibrium, how do these different shifts affect the price and quantity that exists in a particular market?